Richard Bush with his um, VIP process and his Bush process using this kind of pace and lead idea and the, the sort of psychology of belief. How do you take people to actually believe even if they don't want to, uh, which is a difficult thing to do. And creating like not dual realities, but multiple realities. I won't say any more than that, but again, something that made me go, yeah, okay, well, that's, that's even more powerful, really, because it's, yeah, I'm, well, again, I'm not going to give you too much on it. Um, Drew McAdam, who is friends with Uri Geller, who just tells some lovely stories that haven't really been told before or published about Uri's sort of hidden generosity. And yes, they're lovely stories, but he, he does also say that, you know, I can promise that there are a couple of things he did that even though I know all this stuff, I still have no idea how he did it. But what this does is, even though it just sounds like nice stories about Uri Geller, it actually shows us, again, why Uri may have been so successful. And then when we link that back to the original footage, you see, again, this empathy, this caringness. I always say to people, if you're going to be a magician, you know, what's the secret to getting rebooked, getting people who want to use you, get it. Yes, being good at your job, but it's also just being nice, just being someone that people want to work with, that are being easy to work with, again. I'm not talking about Uri, could be a nightmare, I don't know, but, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's good advice and that bleeds through from, from this. You can see something that means quite a lot to me, which is why I've been talking probably about 19 minutes on it. Okay, uh, Alan New, where he just, it's very short, I say just again, saying, look, you know, we can elevate this to more than just bending a spoon. I'm not going to say more than that because it's so short and I'll just end up sort of giving it away. Richard Austin, I really, you know, Richard Austin was... It was Richard Oslin, which I didn't mention before. It was Balachek and Morgan Strebler. But the first one actually was Oslin. I saw Oslin's L&L series, which is great. I um, can't remember what it's called, but just type in L&L Richard Oslin. And he did the Boone's Spoon Bend. It was quite late on. I think it was the fourth or third DVD. And I remember seeing it and going, that looks incredible. I'm going to do that. And then when he talked about the method, I went, no, nah, nobody's going to buy that because I didn't know anything. I was just starting my journey. Of course, we now know very different those people who do it, but I've rewatched Austin and stuff and it's phenomenal. But he talks about his beginnings, which I found really interesting growing up in Connecticut, um, where he saw the sideshows. So I can empathize with it because I saw sideshows in a different way that kind of got me into the whole idea of circus. Um, and then later him uh, seeing Banachek, I think it was him that said, saw Banachek and then, and then that journey started. Um, again, I could be, um, a little bit inaccurate in my details there. Steve Shafton, who's edited the book as well. This is great because, again, if you're not careful, you're going you're gonna to read that and go, oh, there's not much sort of method in here. And Steve takes you through his, kind of the way he uses misdirection, what he does with the bends. And I went through this with spoon in hand. And uh, <laughs> this is a weird sentence, isn't it? And that really helped me with the stuff. And what, what he says, actually, which is, again, isn't it a right or wrong thing, but you say, you know, don't go over, you don't have to bend the thing in 500 places. It's like a couple of bends. And you create loads of bends out of this using just this, again, the psychology of belief and illusion and people's uh, kidding themselves to create loads of magic just around this one, these couple of little things. And that puts it in the ability zone of everybody. There's no massive sleight of hand here. Like some of the routines later um, do take quite a bit of practice. And this does, but not in the way you think. And just on this as well, I think that we because I'll forget to say this later, to, to take metal bending not as a trick but as a genre, which this kind of reminds us it is, is another way of getting over that thing of, I've tried that once, it didn't really work, of going, no, this is like anything. I have to really understand what's around us to make this an experience. And listening, um, reading Steve's essay made me realize, he said, like, you spent eight, you've got to spend ages in front of a mirror just getting it right or filming it or not. Even if you're getting it right, it will improve over time and just get better and better and better. And that's also what Osterlin says, when he just realised that after a amount of time, he just, he just knew exactly the right place to hold it and do it and, and make that illusion just look amazing. Peter Turner, what a brilliant thing this is. I love that Peter has done this essay because he talks about, you know, <laughs> well, he talks his, his Nan's um, experience with this, which kind of parallels strangely Ben's experience with it. It kind of doesn't, but um, Ben has this lovely story about kind of going into the jaws and, and trying to bend spoons and stuff. But... His nan uh, has a story about this, which again, I'm not going to go into because I don't want to ruin it. But I love the fact that Pete said, you know, the, the way you know you're going to fool someone, the most sceptical person in the world is his nan. She's not going to take any rubbish, take no prisoners. And the fact that she had this experience, I thought was great. 
but then Peter goes into his own way of doing this, which is totally different, which again makes you think, oh, that, that could be a whole new approach to this that isn't, again, it's using metaphor, but it's using it in a different way and isn't just about the magician. And a lot of this is about taking it away from you, not all of it, but a lot of it is about taking it away from you and how do we take it away from our ego and go, look what I'm doing, to go, this is happening and this is happening with meaning. And again, Peter gives us another approach to that. The thing I love about these essays, I've read a lot of books, which I still love, that go, here are a load of performers doing different essays on things, or here's a load of different essays. And you get the, you get the sort of idea that they're all saying the same thing, really. Now, even there are, there are similarities. Obviously, there's a constant of this being about the same thing. These do genuinely feel like different approaches, different ideas, or different ways of talking about it, which inform your performance. And it's easy to look at all of this and go, well, it's a book on theory. It's not. It is a book on theory, but it's a book on theory that I guarantee will in some way change or develop your performance. And that is method with this, all right? The things and the bits you do, the naughty stuff you do, isn't the thing really. It's how you do that, but importantly, what you create around it. And that's why this is so important. I, I was part of a little panel discussion recently on Zoom about what makes a good magician. And part of me now thinks, do it, be able to do that because it incorporates everything. It incorporates misdirection, theatre, performance, belief, confidence, all of these things, which I think if you get good at all that stuff, you will be a better magician and you'll be able to transfer those skills to other things. It's not like I'm digressing or anything, is it? Right, what's next? Um, new visions. So this is going from those original moves to like, this is what we think, uh, Uri Geller did, this is what we as magicians have taken it from, and then what was the next step? And this is where we start moving into Banachek's PK Silverware and Morgan Strebler's and Guy Bavli and people like that. Coin bending, after that we have mention of the different gimmicks that came out, like some novelty type gimmicks, but then really expensive stuff, which you can still get now, which is actually getting away from that original performance and making it more real, arguably or arguably not, but there is a cost to that, not just um, an economic cost, but, but in other things as well. But, uh, but again, a really important part of the process and then bend, bending different things. So bending plastic seems like it wouldn't be very impressive, but then you read Ben's thing on it and you go, actually, that'd be quite cool. Um, bending, um, Ba, 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 ba. What are they called? Oh, glass. Yeah, T great to hear. Ben, um, Ben, uh, Ted Leslie. <laughs> ben Leslie. Who's <laughs> Ben Leslie? Um, Ted Leslie. Oh, God, his book's brilliant. I'm going to look there. I'm not going to be able to find it. You don't want to be watching me looking for a book, dear. But now I feel like I've got to. Um, yeah, Paramiracles. Boom. Great book. Apparently a collector's item now, so I'm glad I've got it. But um, his, uh, his bending of glass, which is, which is, absolutely amazing i love it i've never done it i've always wanted to do it and the last bit really is about i haven't forgotten anything have I? um uh is about the future of it and kind of looking ahead where, where it is going now people are still performing it i'm still performing it many people are still performing it but importantly i'm think i after reading this i'm going to perform it differently i can see even when it works now that there's something missing and i think it's a little bit that i'm kind of rushing through it i think the the performance in this can, is one of those things that you can easily rush through. And I think, to, to, as I said, to go, I'm doing this properly, so this is going to take a bit of time. So I can just, I'm sorry about this, but it's, I'm just going to try and create a theatre and tension around that and silence and allow it to speak for itself. That doesn't mean don't have scripting, but, but give it time and space to breathe because it's absolutely incredible. And it's easy to forget how incredible it is and I think after reading this book it will give you more of an idea so for those of you that have thought about going into metal bending as a thing I think it will help you on a methodical level even if you look at and there are the different methods by the way the ones that, that are more similar to the sort of the later methods with the time bends and stuff like that it will it will help you in those ways reading all of it will help you in those ways as well not just about the, the theory side of it but inspire you as well. For those people who already perform it, I reckon you should definitely have a look at it for those people that are thinking, well, oh, magic mentalism, where does it work there? I think it would be great. And what, it's, what I'm doing now is going, great, I've got this sort of way firmer foundation of knowledge that I can now go back to Banachek, I can now go back to Osterlind, I can now go back to Bavli and try and find this stuff or 
give him a call and say, oh, let's watch it, which he'll say, no, don't be silly. Um, and start doing it in the way that I, th I think I need to do it, and that's probably why it's never gone away from me. I keep going back to it. So it's brilliant, clearly. Um, importantly, it's well written. You could read this without the cutlery in hand and still really enjoy it. I think it really does help to see the visuals on this. Yes, books are better. I prefer books. I'm not saying they're better, they're better for me. But I, when you see how good it looks, then you'll go, oh, right, because it, this is, metal bending is one of those things you look at and go, that's not going to look very good, is it? And, but then you realise it, it looks phenomenal. Right, have I forgotten to say anything else? Uh... No, <laughs> I could go on for even more hours. Some of you probably left ages ago. But thanks uh, for sending that to me, Vanishing Ink. Uh, it's a corker. It's going to leave you wanting more. And uh, for those people who say, oh, you say everything's brilliant. Well, I'm not going to read a book and review it if it's not brilliant. I just won't bother reviewing it. Um, but I will say, what's wrong with it? People say, what are the things that are problem problematic with it? I don't know. Got to read it. It's a book. It's quite big for the shelf. You know, it goes with... Goes, yeah, go, not go with as much. <laughs> That's what's wrong with it. Um, but that's no, great. Pictures are lovely. Everything's good about it. And um, yeah, brilliant. Have a good one. Take care. Go and check out onlinemagic.co. See you later.